a lot of very good questions came from the video that we released with a very budget version of the Z440. And a lot of them is centered around what happens if you put a 3090 in them. And so that's today. What we're going to do, we're going to test it out, see what kind of performance we could get with a 3090 instead of the dual 3060s. And somebody did point out in the comments on the last video that the socket itself here has a 50 watt power envelope. And so that plus 250s should give us 350 watts for a 3090. Plenty of clearance here, and it looks like you would have a very free slot down there also. But we'll just leave it like it was for the dual 3060 12 gigabytes. Of course, the 3090 also has 24 gigabytes. So we should be able to run the exact same questions against the exact same models and see what their performance looks like. So same LXE container that we were just using. One change you do need to make is we had two GPUs. That meant we had Dev NVIDIA 0 and Dev NVIDIA 1 passed through. So Dev NVIDIA 1 gave an error when I forgot to remove it. So did have to detach that. And after I detached that, was able to start everything up. No problem. Uh, a couple of people had asked in the comments I saw, how do I update the LXE container that is running the community helper scripts open web UI? Literally just type update inside root. This is uh, super simple. Go to verbose. If there's anything to update, it will tell you and it will pull the update. As you can see, we're already up to date. So nothing to do there. All right, so we have our 3090 ready to go. We've got our models with their context windows assigned. So those are, I just went and verified, all still the same. So we're ready to get the testing underway. We'll start with uh, QWQ just like we did yesterday. Toss it a quick high. And you can see it's using about 18.765 Gibby bytes of VRAM right now. Ooh, yeah, now that jumped up to 21.522. And that came back at 30 tokens per second and 12 prompt tokens per second. I know some people were reading these and having a good time with it. Make sure you uh, check out and hit subscribe because I cover this question as part of our standard uh, set of questions that we've been going through on model reviews for some time. And we've had some really uh, hilarious ones. Yesterday, we actually had some. And you can see this is definitely a faster tokens per second we're getting and the I would say the velocity feels like it's maintaining quite well on this GPU. Okay, so this one's got us cooked and it did that at 28.76 response tokens per second, 1,545 prompt tokens per second. Next up, let's load ourselves the next model here. We're going to go to Gemma 3 27B. And boy, I've got to say, we do like Gemma 3 in this household. It has a lot of really good marketing assistance kind of potential and can really do partner planning and partner ideation very, very well. Uh, kind of a fun model, model to work with also. Very freewheeling on uh, tossing out emojis. And our response tokens per second were 28.02 and prompt were 16.74 on that first load. And now we're going to give it arm again with a twist and see what kind of tokens per second it can process this at. And we rocked 27.87 response tokens per second, 4,147 prompt tokens per second on that one, however. And we got 31 response tokens per second and 17 prompt tokens. Let's go to the one wheel record for Gogito and toss it Armageddon with a twist, however. Oh, and it's an outright refusal. So this one's actually a failure. Gogito would fail on that one. Uh, so we've got 30 response tokens per second and 3,670 prompt tokens per second. And uh, I think that's odd. I don't think it uh, refused the other day when we asked it the same. Uh, but moving on, Deep Coder 14B up next, and we'll toss it at a high to get it warmed up and loaded into RAM. And we're looking at 32.78 response tokens per second and 8.6 prompt tokens there. And tossing it arm again with a twist here. This is a thinking model, so of course it will take some time to do that thinking, but it looks like it's moving it a pretty decent tokens per second clip here. And we got 30.87 response tokens per second, 1,342 prompt tokens per second on Deep Coder 14B Q8. And let's see, I guess we've got Gemma 
3, 12, we already tried the 27. So we'll find out here after we get this warmed up what kind of tokens per second we could expect on Gemma 3, 12B at Q8. And we got back 31.9 tokens per second and prop tokens at 17.82. Check out Gemma 3 with Armageddon with a twist in the 12B Q8 variety and see what kind of tokens per second we can get back. It looks like it is sailing and gave us a pretty quick uptake here on this. And our tokens that we got back were 36 response tokens per second, 2,433 prompt tokens per second. So that gives us a good idea from the models that we checked out, kind of performance we could have expected to see in these. So we had some great findings as a result of doing this testing, and some of it would kind of be what you would expect, some of it not so much. So all of this information you can go find on digitalspaceport.com. I'll create a write-up page for this specific uh, 3090 HP Z440, odd sounding combo, but actually something that would be pretty uh, performant. And that'll complement the other recent ones that we've done. Of course, the one that I've got that it was the one that started this was the mid-range 750. That was two 12 gigabyte 3060s. That gives you 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And that's what we were testing today against the single 3090, also with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Everything else inside the system stayed the same between the two. So when we're looking at the response tokens per second and prompt tokens per second, I broke these charts out into uh, separate ones, and you can find those, like I mentioned, on digitalspaceport.com. All of these things and stuff linked in the description below. So Cogito was pretty much what we would expect, and also that's not necessarily a daily driver. So 30 response tokens per second on a 3090 versus 16.7 on a dual 3060. That's fair. That's about 50% difference. And that's kind of what I would be expecting. Now, if we look at deep coder 14 B Q eight on a 30 90, we've got 30.9, almost 31 tokens per second versus the dual 30 60 at 17 tokens per second. So you can see that parity is very close there between those two. Also, this next one was good because Gemma three, the entire Gemma three line, aside from, you know, above the four B is pretty darn good. The Gemma 312B Q8 on the 3090 hit 36 tokens per second. That is a really good speed and at Q8 on the 12B, a pretty darn decent model also. We saw the same model perform on the dual 3060s at about 19.7 tokens per second. Now, there's a commonality between these that we're about to step outside of, and that is those were somewhat smaller models. We're about to hit bigger models now. And so when we look at Gemma 3 27B Q4 on a 3090, you see that we hit 27.9 tokens per second. If you look at Gemma 3 27B at Q4 on the dual 3060s, we only hit six tokens per second. So that is a big difference between those two. That is a actually quite large uh, difference. I did not expect to see that. I didn't expect to see 50%, but I definitely did not expect to see that. Also, we saw the same impact on QWQ, a 32B, the largest model that we tested, and that was at Q4 on the 3090, hit 28.8 tokens per second, and on the dual 3060s hit right around 12, 11.9. So, that should tell you if you are looking for a class of models that is in the teens, you're probably going to expect and get what you're expecting by going with two 30, 60, 12 gigabytes versus a single 3090. And we're going to check out the prices on eBay. I was just checking these out and I, I'm actually impressed at what we're seeing with 3090s. But before we do that, let's check out the prompt tokens per second. So Cogito kind of freakishly and every now and then i mean prompt tokens per second seem like they just sporadically can be huge sometimes and very small sometimes so uh, there's less I, I i think you tell me in the comments below there's less of a track that you could point to and say aha it is tracking perfectly so maybe maybe not but cogito 14b q8 3090 got 3670 prompt tokens per second and on the dual 3060s about 1550 so a little bit more than a little bit less than half. Not that bad. Now on Deepcoder 14B, this one was weird. The 3090 got 1342 and the dual 3060s got 1650. 
So I couldn't tell you what happened there. That was the same one that we got actually a fairly good size uh, difference between 30.9 and 17 on the, the response tokens per second. So outlier, I don't know. Gemma 3, this one, Gemma 3 had huge differences. And this may have something to do with some of the performance differences and gaps that we saw. But this one definitely stood out to me. Gemma 3, 12B, Q8, 3090, 2,433 uh, prompt tokens per second. However, on dual 3060, 335. Kind of starved. And you probably see that reflecting in the slower tokens per second that we were seeing on the response for the Gemmas. Now let's take a look at Gemma 27B, the big one. And you can see this one is the largest difference that we have of all of them. With Gemma 327B at Q4 on the 3090, hitting 4,147 prompt tokens per second. And then on the dual 3060s, coming back with just 403. So, wow. Uh, like very, very close to 10X there. That's pretty interesting. And definitely we saw the performance of Gemma 327B be very different between these two. And if you are looking for a specific like Gemma 27 model to be running, a single 3090 might start to make a good deal more sense in that scenario. QWQ, I thought this was kind of interesting. Very reasoning reasoner, likes to think a lot, thinking about thinking. QWQ, uh, 32BQ4 in the 3090 was 1,545 prompt tokens per second and 1,260 on the dual 3060s actually very close there. So if you want a more logical, and this probably comes down to some of your use cases, and let me just toss out a couple of use cases in case you might not know between those two models. So when you're looking at Gemma 3, excellent for helping plan, a literally good digital assistant, a general good corpus of information. You're not gonna get the deepest specifics out of Gemma 3, even at the largest size, even at FP16, but you will get really, really good insights as well, it's fun to work with. We use it oftentimes for planning out media content, for planning out events. Gemma 3 is very good at that. However, QWQ, if you wanted to dig deep into something and you wanted to have a back and forth conversation that actually was slow, possibly, depending upon whether you have a 3060 or a 3090, uh, you could have a really meaningful conversation and gain insights pretty good for learning, especially if you're looking to learn new things that you don't know and have any basis in. A reasoning model probably is not a bad place to start. So really quickly, taking a look at 3060s. So I talked about these the other day. That one doesn't look like it's moved much. However, what does look like it is moving down, and I'm very excited about this one, is the 3090s. Be careful, there are some parts only ones here. Uh, but definitely there's some pre-owned ones with people that have, it looks like, pretty decent uh, reviews. So that is something I would consider at $800 and about $20 shipping. Not too bad. $825 looks like where we're at for 3090s. So that is even down since we were talking about these just the other day. Well, you could use the six to eight pin breakouts. Thank you to everybody. I do read your comments and that's what clued me in that I was forgetting that the bus power, in addition to the two uh, power would be able to get me up there. So that actually worked. And I actually have ran this for a good amount of time. I did not see any dramatic impacts. And for sure, I do know this from this over here. If you overuse the wattage, you actually will blip the system out and it'll crash system has been very stable. And as you saw when we were measuring the wattage in there, it looked like we were pulling about 400 to 450 max watts on that system with the 3090 in it. Of course, if you added a bunch of additional high wattage accessories, not sure what that would be, you probably would want to factor that in. But still at 700 watts, it seems like it's got enough headroom for handling one 350 watt GPU. You can go back, check the tips and tricks that I've put together several times on this channel where you would be able to set a automatic NVIDIA SMI that would set a power level for you every time you reboot. So every time you reboot, it would fire that and you would have the power level set. So everybody, I look forward to reading your comments on this. I know everybody's like, run the deep seek with the K transformers and offload to the 3090 on the HP Z440 with the 512 gigs of RAM. And we just might do that. But I do want to uh, get these out whenever I can make a, make a new video happen. And I think that it's good to stick to a single topic also. I think this is a pretty interesting topic as well. 
possibly has some broader questions answered kind of implications around mixing GPUs. And again, one of the most common questions, can I mix GPUs? Absolutely, you can. Can you mix GPUs that are AMD and NVIDIA? Well, hold on there. Can you mix Intel in there? Uh, not so much. But if you have different generations and different amounts of VRAM, you can mix those together in your NVIDIA cards, and it's gonna work at the performance of the lowest common denominator. So Pascal card mixed with Ada card, Ada card would, would be faster. You're gonna get the performance of the Pascal card. And you're not gonna double your performance, but you will additively grow the VRAM allocation that you have between the two cards. There are ways to get around that, and we will be covering those shortly. I definitely would recommend getting a server that's on 24-7, 365 for running your AI inference because it allows you to do so much more. But there's a lot of people out there that they've just got one GPU, they've got one computer, and it's their daily driver, and they would like to use it here and there. And I'm going to show you an ultimate way to get up and running. So be sure you hit like and subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified for that. And I want to sh shout out really loud to the channel members. Thank you very much, everybody that's joined. I really do appreciate it. And I'm dropping content that is members only. And I've got so much content that is just sitting there waiting, ready to be released. May not be this quality, but... It's actually pretty cool. So I think you guys will enjoy it if you do join. And if you don't join, that's cool also. But do feel free to drop a like, drop a share, and also drop a comment. And I'll be reading and responding. Everybody have a great day. I'll check you out next time.